It's early August and we're getting ready for deer season. It's step two of our hidey hole process. Number one was scouting. Well, we found a great location here and today we're gonna to walk you through the steps of creating a hidey hole food plot in the timber. We've put a lot of time on our lacrosse boots scouting for hidey hole locations. And we're looking for easy access. Where can we enter, hunt, and exit without alerting deer? We're looking for maybe natural pinch points that are already occurring, or how can we create a pinch point to get deer within range in that hidey hole food plot? We put a lot of time in, marked up the hunt stand map quite a bit, trying to find tree stand trees, going back and forth, really honing in on the design of our food plots. And we've got a great location right behind me. Let's break this location down and I'll kind of explain why we're putting our hidey hole right here. Right in front of me, there's an interior road. This road allows easy access to get in, hunt, and exit without alerting deer in the target area. And I gotta tell you, this is a little hidden bottleneck in this closed canopy forest. This ridge is fairly flat and you can tell most of these trees are the same size. It's been high graded in the past and there's not a lot of natural bottlenecks right in this area, except for one. And it's the pond that's right behind me. We're in a wicked drought right now and water is definitely a limited resource. This pond's been holding water all summer. In fact, when we started looking at this location, thinking maybe we'll put a hidey hole here, we decided to first put up a mole tree mobile. And sure enough, some good bucks are coming in and drinking out of this pond. This pond's a limited resource and a bottleneck, but it's also acting as a barrier where deer are having to travel around one side or the other. In fact, when I look on the hunt stand map, you can also see the terrain starts diving off here to the east. So there's kind of a drop in elevation and a little flat. So it's kind of creating this bottleneck on this ridge where deer are gonna to have to travel on the high spot of the ridge and around this pond. So we've got a hidden bottleneck here and a limited resource when it's dry. There's also very little quality food around this area. It's a closed canopy forest and a lot of the trees here aren't mature. Like I said, the best trees were removed many years ago and the low quality trees were left. So there's probably not going to be a big acorn crop because these trees just aren't expressing their full potential. And that trickles down into acorn production. Food is going to be a limited resource as we get in hunting season. Putting a little hidey hole in here, that's going to be an attractive food source. So we've got food, water, and this natural bottleneck, a lot of features working together to get deer within range. All that goes into step one, scouting. Finding the limited resource, those hidden bottlenecks, easy access for hunters. Step two is creating the plot. So the real work's gonna start this afternoon. I'm gonna hop in the timber and start opening up the canopy so we can grow some quality food. All right, so. I've walked this multiple times, just back and forth, really thinking about how we're gonna do this. And uh, I've located this tree. It's gonna be a good tree stand tree. So I'm gonna kind of start here. This is gonna kind of be my corner. And I really wanna focus this hidey hole. I want anything that's in the plot to be within a range of that bow. So 30 yards max. This is gonna be kind of my corner tree, if you will, where I can hunt, put a tree stand in, I've also got a couple other trees marked. So I'm gonna start here and start clearing towards the middle. And uh, the guys are with me, they're gonna help me drag. We're gonna drag trees down over the hill and we're gonna be real careful. We're not putting them into a pile where then eventually we're gonna burn where those piles are right next to a big tree that we wanna leave. And when that fire hits that, we've got a lot of fuel at the base of that tree and we damage that tree. So we're gonna have to get that fuel spread out over the hill where it's not creating a barrier directing deer one way or the other around this food plot, getting it out of the way, getting this cleared up, 
and getting some sunlight to the ground. So gonna start cutting and I'm gonna start opening her up. All right, so I'm here at my tree stand tree. There's a cedar right here. I'm gonna leave this cedar uh, and this cedar for now. And I'm gonna wait until I get a tree stand up and then I will probably trim this cedar. I want, I want to leave a little cover around this tree stand tree. You know, if I don't need that cover once I get up there and how I like it, I can cut it down, but I can't put it back up. I'm gonna start cutting these, uh, these small saplings in here. Of course, the hardwoods, I'm gonna treat the stumps with herbicide, the cedars, as long as I cut below that lowest limb, they're terminated, I'm good to go. So here we go. Gonna make a little sunlight hit the ground here. All right, so five minutes is too long. I'm just cutting one or two stems, applying herbicide. Little tip for you, use a paintbrush, foam paintbrush, help save that herbicide and makes it easy to apply that uh, right there to the stump. And I don't have to paint the whole stump, I just need to paint that outer ring, that cambium layer, which is gonna take in the herbicide. So I'm gonna apply herbicide to these hardwoods, probably do one or two at a time, apply some herbicide, and we'll be rolling. I'm gonna get Josh and Seth and Drew. They're gonna come in, start helping me drag, probably get on another chainsaw, start cutting, and we're gonna open this up as quickly as we can. Always gonna keep in mind, of course, we got all our safety equipment, right? We've got our chaps safety goggles hearing protection if we got two guys on chainsaw we're going to space out so we're not felling trees on top of each other we're always thinking safety so already i can tell i've only cut a few but already there's some sunlight coming down so there'll be a few more in just a few minutes you just wait and see all right guys here we go So this doesn't have to be like flush to the ground. Like, you know, we're not clearing this to pass a drill over top of it. You know, if these stumps are up a couple inches, that's fine. We're just gonna be broadcasting this little hidey hole. So I want a sharp chain. I wanna cut as many trees as I can on this chain. So I don't wanna get it down in the dirt or hit a rock or anything like that. So I'm staying well above the ground, several inches tall, hitting those stobs. That's gonna be fine for this little hidey hole. Growing Deer is brought to you by Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's. Also by Green Cover Food Plots, Winchester, Lacrosse Footwear, Moultrie Mobile, Fleet Outdoor Apparel, Morel Targets, RTP Outdoors, Fourth Arrow, Hunt Stand, Scorpion Venom Archery, Case IH Tractors, Ward Laboratories, Burris Optics, National Land Realty, G5 Broadheads, Prime Bows, and Redneck hunting blocks. I mean, here we are. I've cleared 10 yards here, circle, and already so much more sunlight coming down. It's all about sunlight, folks. Whether you're doing native habitat or trying to grow a hidey hole, that forage in a hidey hole food plot, sunlight is key. So, you know, on Instagram, someone just messaged me the other day and said, I think I had a failure on my hidey hole. Then they sent me a picture and it was pretty shaded and I think it just didn't get enough sunlight. So it's really key to open this up and make sure you've got enough sunlight hitting the ground for these hidey holes to express their full potential and let that forage grow. So you can bet I'm starting to envision myself about 20 feet up in this tree with a buck cruising through here come September. So, all right, as I'm going, I'm, I'm thinking hunting, right? And here we've got a small sapling with an overhanging limb right here on the edge of this pond. I'm gonna leave this. This could be a great scrape limb later on this fall. In fact, there's a couple other limbs here on the edge that I can imagine deer cruising through here, maybe grabbing a drink during the rut, checking a scrape, everything's right here. So I'm gonna leave this and kind of plan that into my hunting strategy. I'm always looking for those overhanging limbs that, you know, we can either make a little mock scrape or where deer naturally want to scrape on this overhanging limb. And it's all part of our hunting strategy. 
Ooh, look at this. Look at this. Okay, this tells me I'm on the right track because I looked over and I found these old tree stand pegs in this tree. Someone had the same idea of hunting over this little water hole, probably this little pinch point right here with the road access. Anytime I find this old sign, I know someone was, probably they took the time to put this up. There was a reason why. So this is great sign. I just noticed this, hadn't seen it before. And uh, this makes me excited. There's no telling how many deer were shot out of this tree. Man, if this tree could talk. I bet it saw some good hunts. All right, the guys and I have been working for several hours and it's warm. We ran out of water, so we're gonna say this is phase one. We'll be back tomorrow, finish it up. But we made a lot of progress, a lot of sunlight hitting the ground here of course that sun's starting to go drop on over the ridge to the west but you know you can tell we really piggyback off the pond the opening around the pond and throughout the day that sun's going to be open you know right above that pond and that sun's going to come down and hit this food plot so we're going to have enough sunlight in here to have something growing but we've cut all the cedars now it's time to hit the hardwoods we got to go a little slower and treat those with herbicide so we'll be back tomorrow to finish her up stay tuned and we'll show you the next step all right here we are back at the hidey hole we put in a couple days of dragging we've got everything cut we've just got a few extra hardwood logs that we need to get out of here but as you can see we've got a lot more sunlight reaching the ground and this is looking awesome of course I've got my tree stand tree here. I've got another tree stand over here or here. And we've got multiple hunting locations. Got this pond here, nice little bottleneck in this long hardwood uh, ridge top. As you can see from the drone footage, it's all timber. We've got one little spot with sunlight reaching the ground. Pretty much any forage that's gonna be grown in here is gonna be attractive. So. This is a bottleneck with the water acting as a bottleneck. Two bottlenecks coming together, making a nice little hidey hole food plot. So as you can see, we've got a lot of sunlight reaching the ground, but we've still got a little leaf litter here because these trees have been dropping leaves for years and years. So we built up a little mulch layer underneath. There's leaves on top. There's a lot covering the soil. If we just went ahead and we broadcast this right now i'm going to say maybe 30 or 25 percent of seed is actually going to reach the soil because of the leaf litter we're going to have to remove that leaf litter to make sure we get good seed to soil contact and we'll be sharing those steps here in the next few weeks as as we prepare for planting the last thing i'm going to do after i get all this cleaned up i'm thinking man how much seed do i need to order to plant this hidey hole this is a new plot, I don't know how big it is. So I'm gonna take hunt stand, turn on the trace feature, and I'm gonna walk the perimeter. So it's gonna be a portion of an acre, what portion of an acre this little hidey hole is, and then I can calculate how much seed I'm gonna to need to order to plant this hidey hole. So that's a real important feature. You know, you have several hidey holes. You're not just gonna say, hey, I need 10 acres of seed and that'll cover it. No, you want to save your money. You may only have, you know, three or four acres of seed that you need based on how big your hidey holes are. So you save a little money knowing exactly how big your hidey holes are. You add them up and then you know, I'm going to broadcast twice the recommended drilling rate or there's a broadcasting rate on the green cover seed. And you know exactly how much seed you need to order to apply to make sure your hidey hole, you're not using too much seed or not enough seed to get a good stand. Just got done marking this up on hunt stand, use the trace feature to go around the border and then use the mapping tool to create the border of this food plot. And it tells me exactly how many acres this is. This is a portion of an acre, it's 0.16 acres. So that's gonna tell me how much seed I need to order for this hidey hole. That's the last step here, creating and preparing 
as we get ready for planting season. So stay tuned. We're going to show you the next step. That's going to be preparing the seed bed and planting. That's going to be here in a few weeks. When the conditions are right, we'll be sharing those steps with you. Hey, I hope you're able to get outside this week and enjoy creation. You know, it's raining right now and we've been in a wicked drought and need that moisture and we're thankful for that moisture. And there's probably a lot of things in your life that you can be thankful for, even though it may be a tough season. I hope you slow down and think about those blessings, but more importantly, think about the creator and the purpose he has for your life. Thanks for watching Growing Deer.